so why do we work why do we avoid work and uh, why our work motivation is hardly stable do managers understand why we work and as discussed earlier the need for work can be any so as per maslow's theory it is it can be either physiological needs or it can be safety needs or it can be uh, social needs or esteem needs i mean uh, self actualization needs so need varies from person to person and to fulfill the need people work and when the avoidance of work comes only when a person it can be the retirement uh, stage or when the person is not satisfied with the job or when the person attains a position where work may not be required either financially or by wealth so why our work, work motivation is hardly stable it can be of various factors and uh, do managers understand why we work since it is the responsibility of the manager to supervise and uh, monitor how the work goes on as part of the responsibility trusted on, on him or her so they have to understand what is the work done by the subordinate or what the employee is doing so rather than the micro level management at least the overview should be with the management to see that is able to perform next comes personality as far as the work or the ability is concerned every work environment is different there may be similarities between them every organization is comprised of different people which creates a unique grouping of personalities while every organization is different there are certain similarities we can discuss to comprise a typical contemporary work experience understanding personality traits is the key to predicting behavior and understanding how situations can influence individuals as we have discussed in many of the previous modules organizational behavior operates on three levels this section will also evaluate how work experience can differ at each level and we need to keep in mind while reviewing this section that there are outliers to every situation the first part of this module will examine a typical work experience and how best it is understood personality traits recognizing your personality traits is the first step in successfully achieving the goals being able to capitalize on strengths and also understanding how to strengthen your weaknesses is the cornerstone of success when we use our personality to make decisions best is suited for ourselves we are more likely to find long lasting happiness and satisfaction similarly understanding the personalities of others will help as to form stronger relationships uh, in some ways finding someone with different personality traits can be beneficial relationships involving individuals with opposite personalities can challenge each person to view situations from a different perspective in the workplace differing personality traits are important to creating a diverse workplace where creativity and varying ideas can thrive at the same time it is also important to surround yourself with people who have similar core beliefs values and goals if you are generally a positive person but choose to surround yourself with negative people you will most likely become more pessimistic this type of toxic personality trait can be determined or detrimental to the workplace hiring employees while taking their personality into consideration through behavioral based interview questions personality tests etc can help foster an inclusive and positive work environment before we dive into the varying types of personalities and how personality traits can be categorized we first need to address the difference between personality and character though the two are often used interchangeably they are indeed two different topics personality is fairly easy to identify early in your relationship even when just first meeting someone it is easy to tell if that person is outgoing talkative funny or energetic it is also easy to determine if someone is 
boring, negative or shy. On the other hand, character traits such as loyalty, honesty, kindliness etc. are harder to identify immediately upon meeting someone. Character traits require experience with an individual to fully understand and interpret their choices and actions. While having a strong character is extremely important for any strong relationship, for the purpose of this section, we will focus primarily on personality. Who am I? This question asked so often suggests that there is actually a plausible answer, almost as if our being were a fixed thing. People who ask this sort of question are typically struggling with their identity and are searching for a core sense of themselves. The irony is that the more you seek to identify who you are, the more fragile you are likely to feel about yourself. There may be an inverse correlation between the question being asked and the ease with which you experience your life. The emphasis shouldn't be on discovering who you are, that is what is buried beneath but on facilitating the emergence of what you would like to experience. Our identity should be seen as an ongoing process rather than a static snapshot. We should embrace a flowing sense of self whereby we are perpetually reframing, reorganizing, rethinking and reconsidering ourselves. How different would be the life if rather than asking who am I, we contemplated how we would like to engage life. A sense of inadequacy often informs the question around who am I as people engage the deepening complexity. I have worked with people who have been married more or less for their entire adult lives. Upon divorce, they are often confronted with a distressing thought. They claim that they don't know who they are, more to the point. They may not know who they are as a single autonomous adult not partnered. After all, how could they? Rather than remaining mad in fear, you would need to summon up a sense of wonder and adventure. There is a new sense of self waiting to be born. You get to recraft yourself along the way. At the other end of the identity, continuum are those who claim to know themselves so well. This other extreme also signifies a fragility about one's identity. To know yourself so well leaves no room for growth. Even more, it suggests a deep vulnerability that is being defended against as if it were too dangerous to take a closer look. It makes perfect sense to seek a deeper sense of a self. To become intimately aware of your thoughts, feelings, hopes and fears is obviously advisable. The key is to engage your sense of self as malleable, more like a willow tree than a sturdy oak. The willow is flexible and survives the storm as it bends with the wind, whereas the rigid oak is more likely to crack. The universe reportedly exists in a state of flowing potential and it is essential to understand that we are indeed part of that universe. The goal then is to assess that potential keeping the parts of our identity that continue to serve us well and shedding the old habitual pieces that constrain us. This process is known as positive disintegration. This permits us to find balance between the extremes previously discussed and enter into a relationship with self that commits to our personal evolution.